Hey, we'll let you guys take over since I've talked a lot the last three days. Yeah. Um, I guess basic Jarrett Dagan, how's he doing after a day or two? Of good. Practice? He had a really good workout yesterday. We'll scrap a little bit tomorrow. We catch a flight out tomorrow night to California. Um, so assuming that scrap goes good, uh, you know, we got both guys ready to go. I think Ryan Leisure's doing a really good job for us. I think he's making strides from if you saw him the first time to, you know, he had the number one ranked guy in the nation or number two ranked guy in the nation on um, Sunday and stayed in there and fought, especially at the end, which I really like. It's, it would have been easy for him to put his head down and, you know, make that attack or a pin, but he stayed in there and fought. And then, uh, so we'll have him and Jarrett both ready to go. And, you know, right now, if Jarrett feels good, he's the guy. And so uh, if he doesn't, then Ryan will go, but Jarrett knows his body uh, better than anybody. And so, you know, we'll let him make that call. What has Jarrett's workout plans been to kind of build it back up? So you mentioned He's been wrestling for about three weeks uh, now off and on. Um, you know, his shoulder, like I said, no secrets. He's got, he's, he tweaks it every now and then. There's pain there that's really kind of a mystery because the MRI looks good and the x-ray looks good, but something from the surgery just wasn't quite right. And uh, we'll have to figure it. You know, we just don't have time to go in and slice it open and figure it out right now. We'll probably do that in March. How much on mat stuff has it been building back up? Or has yeah, it been cardio? Mean, and nope, all, he's been on the mat. mat. Uh, you know, he went through the whole, we probably wrestled 30 minutes live yesterday, went through the whole workout line. Does he have a brace? Yeah, he does, but I, you know, I think it's more for probably just a little mental, uh, you'll see it, you know, just a, more of a, of a mental thing, but uh, you know, some days it looks great, some days it's sore, so maybe he's just getting old and it's arthritis. <laughs> but we don't know yet. What are the challenges of being a backup wrestler like Ryan Leisure, who's kind of uh, in limbo right now? Well, I think it's an opportunity. You know, you're in front of you're you got an All American in front of you, and uh, I think it's an opportunity. And whether he ends up being the guy or not being the guy, it's going to be a situation where he's still got two more years left after this year, and I think he can draw from that experience and just seeing what it's like to be out there. I tell the red shirts and the backup guys that you know it's one thing to watch, uh, but to actually have to step out there uh, when you got uh, you know a real atmosphere that you can't you can't fake that in there and so he's done a good job there. Marcus Coleman at 184. He's a guy that you said on Sunday. There's a great wrestler in there. We just have to get it out of him. Yeah, what you do know, you have to do we, to get it yeah, out of him? Yeah, we don't know. We see it in the room and everything. You know, I think it's just a, it's it's going to have to be a mental decision in Marcus's point to uh, you know get some confidence. I think you see it in other sports too. You see guys in baseball go through hitting slumps. You see basketball players you know, have bad nights. And uh, so we just got to get a good night. And, and luckily we know there's a lot of athletic ability in there and a guy that comes in and works real hard. And I just believe that when you put your time in uh, day after day and work as hard as he works, that uh, it'll all come together. Is it guys putting pressure on themselves? Cause it's not just him. You mentioned some other guys yesterday too, that is it just like the lights come on type of thing? No, I think Marcus is the only one right now. I mean, Marcus is obviously not cutting a lot of weight. Um, you know, we had some obviously uh, well-documented, you know, issues and how we finish matches on just, uh, you know, that we're kind of more related to, to lifestyle and stuff like that. Marcus has just got to get the, get, the, get the mojo going in his head. How are the lifestyle things going? Um, I know Sam Colbert is a guy that yeah. uh, has been a little up there. I mean, he's cutting down to 74 now. He's hardly 84. How is he doing? Well, we had a good, really good Monday. Uh, we were, were two for two in weigh-ins uh, as a team. And so we're going to try to go three for three here. And then we hope to go four for four. And you know, if we keep doing that and we keep hit, hitting the numbers coming in, uh, your body can't help but to adjust to that. And that's the message that you know, I want to get across to these guys is that if you do it right, and you do it right, and you, and you have the discipline to hit the same number every day, your body, the way your body's created, it's gonna just, it's gonna adapt. But when you're up and down and up and down, you, 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 you trick your body and your body doesn't know what's right and what's wrong and so we just got to get that consistency. For a guy like Colbre who was bigger early in the year now wrestling at 74, what is that weight that you want him, I mean 74 would be ideal, but what weight do you want him to be hitting every day? Well he needs to come in, you know, five, six pounds overweight, uh, you know, especially with quick turnaround matches where you wrestle on a Sunday and you wrestle on a Friday. Um, and he did that yesterday, he had a great workout, probably one of the best workouts I've seen him. He hit the number coming in. Um, but he kept it down after Sunday, you know, by maybe by shame or by force, but whatever, he kept it down. And so I um, had, you know, Monday afternoon at 3.30, it's probably one of the best mat workouts I've seen him have. He probably left within two pounds of, just by workout, left within two pounds of his weight. So that's the way to do it. What challenges does Fresno State bring? Um, you know, there are, uh, I know this is they've really created a great environment down there. So when you go on the road and wrestle somebody's home arena, they're going to be fired up. 
and we still have a target on our head, even though we haven't maybe had some of the dual meet results we wanted to. We're still a team that got second in the Big 12 last year. We're still a top 20 team. And Fresno's, like everybody else, they're all trying to make a name for themselves. So when you go into somebody's home arena, you get their best shot. And I know Troy Steiner very well. He's a great coach. Uh, he's going to have them ready to go. He's going to have them excited, and we've got to understand that. What kind of challenge, unique challenge is Josh Hokit? Because, I mean, he's an All-American, but he's also a very accomplished football player. Yeah, he's, he's just an athlete, you know, and he's a competitor. And so um, he's a small heavyweight. And, it can be a good match, you know, and, and if, you know, Gannon's got to be excited about that. That's a good measuring stick. I mean, he gets a chance to beat an All-American on Friday night, and so uh, he doesn't get a lot of ch chances to be the underdog, but he's going to be the underdog a little bit on, on Friday night. At 197, has anybody kind of stepped forward in your mind? I mean, Dugan came out, got a takedown right away, fought pretty tough Sunday. Yeah, you know, Dagan threw it out, or Dugan, excuse me, Dugan, Dagan, Dugan <laughs> threw it out there. Um, you know, just, just makes a lot of mistakes and just young and, you know, very inconsistent, uh, like a freshman, just very inconsistent. But we see some really good things there, some really good signs there. So, you know, he's got to get it done in here behind me in the room. Um, Shapiro's much more steady in the room, probably not quite as athletic as uh, Dugan is. Uh, and he's small for, you know, he, he's probably a 184 pounder. So he's really having to, uh, you know, give up some weight, some size at 197. But Joel Shapiro's a really hard worker and we like what, uh, you know, the progress he's made. They're just young guys, you know. It's just uh, sometimes, especially being at upper weight when you're a freshman, you're going to take a few beatings. Thanks, Coach.